Kyle Shanahan is the best coach in the NFL today. Yes, the guy who named his son after Lil Wayne is the coach I would most want to run my team from this present moment into the future. I don't know, but I know I did perform at this badass bitch birthday party recently. She was crazy stupid thick. Since 2019, Kyle has one NFC West title, two NFC championship appearances, one NFC title, and one Super Bowl appearance. Is it the most impressive resume in the NFL on paper? Of course not. So you may be wondering, if he isn't the coach with the most rings, wins, or success, how on earth could I possibly say Kyle is the best coach in the NFL? It's because you are defining success for a coach through only the tangible. But coaching is about much more than wins and losses. Because the greatest measure of a coach is his ability to get the most out of the least, elevate his players, and put them in the best situation to succeed. Shanahan has achieved the most with the least at the most important position. His level of difficulty is much higher than his peers, defying absurd obstacles along the way to put his team in position to win. No one has had to overcome more to win than Kyle Shanahan, Belichick, Brady, Tomlin, Big Ben, Harbaugh, Lamar, Lafleur. Rodgers, Reed, Mahomes, McDermott, Allen, McVeigh, Stafford, Shanahan, Garoppolo? That doesn't even sound right coming out of my mouth. Two of the past three seasons, Kyle has led his team to the NFC Championship, not with Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, or Patrick Mahomes, but with Jimmy Garoppolo. Feels great, baby. <laughs> Don't let his handsomeness distract you. Jimmy G is not in that class of quarterback. Two conference championship appearances in three seasons. That's tough to achieve with any quarterback, never mind an average one. In fact, there is only one other coach who has achieved this throughout the same time span, Andy Reid. An Andy Reid, who don't get me wrong, is a Hall of Fame coach, but an Andy Reid who has had the best tight end in the NFL, the most dangerous receiver, Chris Jones, who is better than any San Francisco defensive player, and Tyron Matthew, better than any 49er secondary player. Oh, and some guy named Patrick Mahomes. After Reid, McVay is the only other coach who has more playoff wins than Shanahan, but since 2019, four of McVay's five playoff wins have come with Matthew Stafford. After 2018, McVay stalled out with Jared Goff, got fed up, and moved on. McVay has also been blessed with the best defensive player of his generation, Aaron Donald, the best cornerback in the NFL, Jalen Ramsey, and seemingly a cap that doesn't exist. I will give McVay one thing. He beat Kyle to the punch in convincing Stafford, and he was rewarded for it because quarterbacks matter. And then there's Belichick, probably the greatest coach of all time, but even he has mostly struggled to adjust in life post Brady. Speaking of Billy B, there was a theory that Belichick traded Garoppolo to San Francisco to spite Robert Kraft because he knew that Kyle would give him the best chance to succeed. And of course, Bill was right. It is pretty obvious Jimmy is at best an average quarterback with below average physical talent. And it is also pretty clear to anybody with eyes that the Niners could do better at the position. If for whatever reason you are blind and disagree, then why are teams reluctant to trade for Jimmy? Let me answer that for you. Because the NFL knows he isn't that great outside of San Francisco. The amount Kyle maximizes Jimmy is evident in the numbers beginning with the discrepancy between his yards per attempt and average depth of target. 2019, third in yards per attempt, 38th in average depth of target. 2020, ninth in yards per attempt, 41st in average depth of target. 2021, second in yards per attempt, 28th in average depth of target. Essentially, Jimmy is gaining chunks of yards while not throwing the ball very far at all. In other words, a quarterback's dream. Over the last two seasons, Jimmy G's target depth ranks 29th 
and is the NFL's worst quarterback on passes thrown 20 plus yards down the field. Three touchdowns, nine picks. Despite that, the Niners offense has led the NFL in explosive pass rate, pass plays of 20 plus yards, two of the past three seasons. This is why Kyle Shanahan is a wizard. His offense led the NFL in explosive play rate despite employing the worst deep passer in the NFL. Make that make sense. In 2021, Jimmy led the NFL in yards per completion, despite his 7.5 intended air yards per pass attempt, which ranked 22nd. Jimmy G has been a productive quarterback, a winning quarterback, despite doing very, very little. His life has been made easy by Shanahan. In all four seasons with the Niners, having more yards after catch than completed air yards. I'm not saying that Jimmy is bad. It takes some ability to execute an offense. But what I'm saying is Jimmy is the definition of a system quarterback if there ever were one. Just look at the top 20 leaders in yards per attempt since 2018. Kyle has three quarterbacks inside the top 20. No other team has two. But how? The cunning warrior attacks neither body nor mind. Tell me how! It's all about the yards after catch. The yak. There goes Debo Samuel. Yards after contact, stepping out of bounds. Kyle is the yak king. For the fifth time in the last six seasons, Shanahan's team has led the league in yak, and it wasn't particularly close. Since Shanahan took over the 49ers in 2017, they are by far the best yak team in the NFL. The only year Shanahan's team hasn't led the league since 2016 was his first in San Francisco, where he was stuck with Brian Hoyer and a roster built by Chip Kelly. And even then, the 49ers were first in the league over the back half of the season. Garoppolo himself stands in first place in yak since 2006. The top five quarterbacks in this metric with at least 400 pass attempts since 2006 are Garoppolo, Nick Mullins, Patrick Mahomes, Jared Goff, and CJ Beathard. Did you notice a theme there? That's three Niners. So when you see the quarterback leaders in EPA, just know that's not a Jimmy stat. It's a Shanahan one, as is pretty much every other stat. It's not just quarterbacks who Kyle makes better either. Shanahan's 49er offense has produced the two yak per reception leaders since 2017, Debo Samuel and George Kittle. Can we call Kyle? Should I FaceTime him right now? Yeah, let's face that. Those guys are phenomenal talents, but neither one was a first round pick, meaning that Kyle saw something special in them that nobody else saw. And without Kyle's unique utilization, I highly doubt that they're as effective anywhere else as they are in San Francisco. What type of madman does the stuff that he's doing with Debo? Maximizing his greatest talent as a ball carrier. And then there's Trent Williams, lead blocking in the NFC Divisional Round. Who else even attempts this shit? What did I just call? No coach compares to Shanahan when it comes to utilizing what's available to them. From 2019 to 2021, the 49ers have had three different leading rushers, Raheem Mosert, Jeff Wilson, and Elijah Mitchell. Undrafted, undrafted, and a fifth round pick rookie. And three different leading receivers. Kittle, Ayuk, and Debo. Some people, despite this evidence, may still claim that Kyle can't win without the handsome one. My counter to that would be, the reason Kyle's record suffers without Jimmy Garoppolo is not because Jimmy wasn't playing, it's about who was playing. The combination of CJ Beathard, Nick Mullins, and Brian Hoyer started 11 games in 2017, 13 games in 2018, and 10 games in 2020. Remember, the 2017 and 2018 49er teams were also rebuilding. If you ever doubt the genius of Shanahan, just remember that Nick Mullins is third all-time in passing yards through 13 starts behind Andrew Luck and Patrick Mahomes. This fucking guy. Wanna be Brett Favre. Sorry, Nick. I love you. That is 34 games, guys. 34. 
Kyle has coached 81 total. That's 42% of his games with not just backups, but third string quarterback talents. Nick Mullins is now the third string on the Raiders and CJ Beathard is a backup in Jacksonville. Jacksonville. Kyle Shanahan has been missing his starting quarterback in 25 games since 2018. The next closest is Mike Tomlin with 15. When Kyle Shanahan has had a NFL starter at quarterback, not an elite starter, a starter, he wins. His record with Jimmy Garoppolo is 31 and 14, which is 68.89%. But it's not just the quarterback who's been missing in the lineup either. The 49ers are always injured. In terms of man games lost, 2017, they ranked 10th. 2018, they ranked 4th. 2019, they ranked 6th. 2020, they were 1st. And 2021, they were 4th. Top 10 every single season he has coached. The 2029ers were the second most injured team over the past 20 years. With this many injuries, it's hard to practice, game plan, and build chemistry and momentum as a unit. It's impossible. Um, I can't guarantee that anybody in the world will be alive Sunday, so I can't guarantee who will be on our roster on Sunday. In case you weren't following, Kyle has coached the most games without his starting quarterback and the most consistently injured team in football since he arrived. And as the cherry on top, Kyle has been coaching in the toughest division in football. Since 2019, no coach in the NFC West has a losing record. Now that we have that absurd record argument out of the way, allow me to debunk the biggest reason why people may not accept Kyle as the best coach in the game. His late game clock management. Remember how I said that all great coaches have been tied to great quarterbacks? This is why. Because in the biggest games, you need a baller, a quarterback who can bail you out when the chips are down. Kyle has never received that luxury. Think about it. Tom Brady led the Patriots on a game-winning drive in all six Patriots Super Bowl victories. How many rings would Belichick have without Tom coming through in the big moment? I'll tell you what Tom Brady just did. Gives me Andy Reid was seen as a choker until Patrick Mahomes came along. The reason Kyle lost these games was not because he called the wrong play, he refused to run the ball, or because he was the inferior coach. Kyle simply had the inferior option at quarterback. And football, at the end of the day, is a game of execution. It's about the players. This leads us to the enigma named Playoff Jimmy. When you look at Jimmy's playoff resume, the man has been putrid. A young Mitch once said, The playoffs are the difference between great quarterbacks and very good quarterbacks. The greatest to the great and the great to the very good and the very good from the good. When Jimmy has been asked to pass for more than 200 yards, just 200, his team loses and never thrown for more than 172 yards in any playoff win. Meaning that in the biggest games, Kyle only passes out of necessity because he does not trust his quarterback. Imagine attempting to win a Super Bowl with a quarterback you can't trust. Jimmy's reliance on Kyle's scheme is apparent through this PFF graph, showing the amount of quarterback dropbacks that were perfectly covered by a defense. The Niners had the lowest percentage of perfectly covered dropbacks in 2021, but the amount of contested targets still ranked highly at about 20%. What does that mean? Well, it means that the quarterback was detrimental to the scheme through his accuracy, decision-making, and playmaking. In the playoffs versus the best defenses in the NFL, the windows get tighter, forcing quarterbacks to make more plays. You can't afford to miss the throws that are there, and Jimmy has missed far too often. As one Bucks coach said, if Garoppolo could throw a deep ball, he would have won two Super Bowls already. In order to win big games in this league, you need big performances from your quarterback. You tell me the last time a coach won a Super Bowl with the quarterback throwing for 170 yards per game in a postseason run. But we all know that there is more to being a head coach than scheme and play calling. 
It's about leading, teaching, and communicating. This is where Kyle Shanahan is extremely underrated. Kyle's style is one where he walks the fine line of friend and coach. And I think this closer bond between student and teacher is what makes Kyle a coach so many players love to play for. The most impressive aspect of his coaching is his ability to teach the details. Kyle is an extremely smart guy, but more important than that, he can communicate his creativity. I love his unfiltered communication style. A win is there could be 12 wins for our team. All right, we know we got one more. I can't tell you guys how much I appreciate everyone here. That was huge. I want everybody gets game balls. He doesn't hide his F-bombs or expression. He's genuine and his no-nonsense honesty is what garners respect from his players. You guys are ready to go. This is what you guys have done all that for. So I want to remind you guys of that. Now it's time to cut it loose. You have to be a pretty awesome coach to be compared to the GOAT. Multiple people that have worked with Kyle see similarities to Bill Belichick. Scott Pioli, who won three Super Bowls with Belichick on multiple occasions, has gone out of his way to state, and I quote, as similar to Bill Belichick as I've seen a coach. His attention to detail in a good way is maniacal. He's brilliant, he's driven, and he has humility to look himself in the mirror. We are going to be talking about Kyle for years. The true testament of a great coach is how he can elevate the people around him. And no one does that better than Kyle Shanahan. In an era defined by offense, there is no better play caller and offensive mind in the game. There is no coach that gets more out of less. Kyle is a generational coach, a game changer, a trendsetter. Kyle Shanahan is the best coach in the NFL today. Um, who's number one? Jay. Jay-Z? Mm. No, that's cool. It's okay. That's Drake okay. number three. That's okay. I thought Drake was going to be number one. M's not even on the list. Eminem? Who else was on the list? Um, Gooch. Yeah, Gucci was on the six, Rick Ross. Gucci who? Gucci man? Mm -hmm. Was on the list and Eminem went on the list? Shout out my nigga Gucci. <laughs>